Hello and welcome to the chapter 9 workout problem video. We have three problems in this video that I will work through. Problem 1, a new entrant. What we're talking about here is we have a monopoly type situation and there is a new entrant that wants to come into the, uh, into the market. So we're considering the following figures, the figure down here on the bottom. Suppose that PO, which is the price in this case, is $10, and P1, uh, which is the higher price, is $11. So suppose a new firm with the same LRAC, which is a long run average cost curve, right, as the incumbent, meaning the one that's already in the market, tries to break into the market by selling 4,000 units of output. So this is the new person coming in is trying to sell 4,000 units of output. It says estimate from the graph what the new firm's average cost of producing would be. Okay, so we, so we have our we have our long run average cost curve down here on the bottom, and really what we're looking at here is we're looking at a point uh, that's about four thousand. So we're going to be looking at the point straight up from this output level, right, right here, right. There's four thousand, and we're going to look look straight up from there. We can draw a line straight up there. We're going to be able to see the long run, or the average cost curve kind of curves up here and meets, we'll say, right about there. So this one is 10, this one's 11, there's 12, uh, 13, right about there, right? So we're going up 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're, maybe we're right about at the $13 level. So that's what we're going to say. We're, we're going to say that it's going to be about. It says estimate from the graph what the new firm's average cost of producing would be and we're going to say it's about $13 because we're going to extend the long run average cost curve out and we're going to take the output level and where these two intersect is where the, uh, the firm's average cost is going to be. So that's the first part of that and then we're going to go ahead and take it a little further here. It says so we're considering the following figure again, which is the same figure. It says, if the incumbent continues to produce 6,000 units, so the incumbent is producing right at this level, right at 6,000, right? How much output would be supplied to the market by the two firms? So the new entrant is going to produce right here, right? So that, that right there is where the new entrant is, and right here is where the existing company is. So our existing company is going to be 6,000 units and then our new company is going to produce 4,000 on top of that. So we see that our, our total market supply then would be 10,000. So that's, that's how that one's done. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on to the next part of problem one. So it says estimate what would happen to the market price as a result of the supply of both the incumbent firm and the new entrant. Approximately how much profit would each firm earn? Okay, so so we know the cost structure, right? So this is our, uh, we'll say incumbent, right? Because that's what it's been called. Uh, the cost, cost for our incumbent is, uh, we'll say it's close enough to 11. We'll just say it's straight up 11 on that. So our incumbent, we'll say our incumbent's cost is $11 at 6,000. And then we're going to say our new entrant here, their cost is going to be uh, 13, right? We already figured that out, right? So the cost is going to be $13. Now what we need to figure out is we need to figure out the market price as a result of the supply. And the market price is really going to be determined by the level of output, right? So here are both firms they're producing and we know that that is going to equal 10,000 right here in the middle. So this is our output level. We take that line up to the demand curve and there's where we're going to be producing right there, right? And supplying. Okay, we're assuming that the supply curve is going to come up through here and it's going to look something like it's going to look something like that, right? Which is the supply curve which in the case of a monopoly, it really is also going to look like and be really the trend of the marginal cost curve. And so we're gonna, we're gonna take the price over here 
and we're gonna say so there's 10 we're gonna drop 9 8 7 six. so we're right about six dollars is really what the price is gonna be okay so we know with the incumbent making 11 six dollars that's gonna be a loss of five dollars per unit for the incumbent for the new entrant uh, six dollars that's going to be a loss of seven dollars per unit so there there's not a profit that's going to be made right it's going to be a loss in this case and really what's going to happen is the new entrant is going to fail okay uh, that they are not going to be able to sustain the losses at this level most likely as long as the incumbent will be able to sustain their loss right because their loss is going to be less so with a new entrant, you're going to have a lower price, so the price is going to drop. But then eventually, the new entrant will drop out. They'll cease to exist, and then the incumbent is going to be able to produce at their level, and the price will rise again, and they'll be able to make a profit. All right, let's go on to problem two. So it says in problem two, we're supposed to consider figure uh, 9.6. So it's in the chapter 9. It's 9.6 is the figure. And we're supposed to identify the quantity of output the monopoly wishes to supply and the price it will charge. So if you watch the video, you're already going to kind of see this happen. So the quantity that they're going to be producing for output is going to be four. And the price they're going to charge is going to be right about here, right? So it's going to be right about $900. Just looking at the gra at the uh, at our chart here the figure. So $900 is going to be the price, 4 is going to be the output. Now with that we're going to add a, um, add a twist here. So what we're going to do is we're going to suppose that the monopolies, the demand for the monopolies product increases dramatically. So that's going to look like this. Okay, here's the new demand. Okay, so old demand was here. This was old. This is new demand over here in green. Okay, so there's the new demand. So we went ahead and just threw the demand curve in. That's what it's going to look like, right? So the question is, is what happens to the marginal revenue as a result of the increase in demand? So the old marginal revenue is right here, right? So this line, this line right here is going to be the old marginal revenue, right? Right there is old marginal revenue. So what's the old marginal revenue revenue going to do? It's also going to shift over. So we're also going to have a shift in marginal revenue and it's going to look something like this down through here. So that'll be n the new marginal revenue. Okay, something like that. It'll look like that. So what happens to the marginal cost curve? Uh, well, marginal cost curve is not going to be affected. It's not going to be affected. It's not going to shift. So not, not necessarily. We're not going to have a shift in marginal cost on that. We know that that shifting demand, we know that sh the, the demand, the forces that shift demand don't necessarily shift the marginal cost. In this case, we can look at it and we're gonna see really marginal cost is gonna look and act a lot like supply. And really that is that is kind of how you derive the supply curve. We, we learned back when we did um, utility maximization and that, from inference curves that you derive the demand curve from the utility and the price uh, of uh, and the utility for for the uh, consumer, right? Supply is actually created using the marginal cost curve of the firms in the market. All right, so that's that's that one. So we did we drew the demand curve. What happens to the marginal revenue? What happens to the marginal cost? Next is we're going to identify the new profit maximizing quantity and price. Okay, so here's our new maximizing quantity and price. So here is marginal revenue equals marginal cost right there, right? So there's our new quantity, right? So we can, this original quantity was here and then now our quantity has shifted over. So increased quantity there. Our original price was right here, right? It was right about 900. Now the new price is going to be, we're gonna go ahead and draw this up a little bit here, right? Our new price is gonna be here, which will put our new price about, it's gonna be a little over a thousand, right? 
So it'll be a, maybe, let's say 1100. So because demand increased, then our monopoly is going to be uh, able to charge a higher price and even have a higher output, right? Have a higher quantity of output. Now the marginal revenue is going to be this area right in here, right? So from the price down to the cost curve, all of this is going to now be the profit, okay? So this is gonna be profit and it's gonna be larger than the original profit, so profit is going to go up. We're able to make more, charge more, our profit's gonna go up uh, as well, all because the demand increased for our product. So a monopoly has a lot of power to set the price through its output, but the demand for its product still trumps, right? Still, it still outweighs the power of the monopoly. If nobody wants the product or service the monopoly is able to deal out, it still isn't gonna be able to possibly make a profit or it'll, it'll uh, affect its profit. Problem number three, what we're supposed to do in this one is we are supposed to draw a monopolist demand curve. We're supposed to also draw the marginal revenue and the marginal cost curves. Then we're supposed to identify the profit maximizing output level. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna draw this out. Okay, so demand is gonna look something like this, right? So that's demand. This is our marginal revenue is gonna be a straight line. We're gonna try to make it as straight as possible. Okay, starting here, well, we're gonna start pretty close up here to the demand and then it's gonna and then it's going to be a straight straight line that kind of goes like this. So that's supposed to be straight. Okay, and that's marginal revenue. Now marginal cost is going to come across here. Typically it starts up high, right? Swoops downward and then heads back up again. So that is marginal cost. That's typically what a marginal cost curve is going to look like. So where is the profit maximizing point? Right? It's going to be right here, right? So this is going to be our profit maximizing point. This is gonna be our profit maximizing output right here. We can call it QO right there. So that's what that looks like. Now what we're supposed to do is, now think about it, now we're supposed to think about a slightly higher level of output. And then according to the graph, is there any consumer willing to pay more than the marginal cost of that new level of output? So let's, let's consider a new level of output, right? So this is where the profit maximizing point is of, quanti of quantity output. The price maximization happens up here, right? Because that's step. So step one is we're supposed to find this, right? Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Okay, step one. Step two, we're supposed to draw a straight line up from that point to the demand curve, and that will tell us where our price is, okay? And then step three, to find the profit, we find the area, right, in between our marginal revenue, marginal cost, and the price, and this area right here is really what we consider profit. Now, that's maximum profit. Now, what it wants us to consider is it wants us to consider a quantity just a little more than QO. Let's, let's call it Q one over here, okay? And so we're gonna go ahead and draw a dotted line up there from Q1. Now is anybody at this point right here, is anybody willing to pay this price? Let's say it's P1 down here. Oh yeah, there definitely is, right? There, That's even less price, so that's great. Are they willing to pay it? Yeah, they would pay it. Uh, the monopolist is not necessarily gonna be willing to supply it, but if they did, what would the case be, right? is somebody would definitely want it, right? And society would benefit from it. So if we remember back in the early days, we talked about something called consumer surplus and supplier surplus, right? That's where demand and supply met, right? So if our marginal cost equals supply, typically our equilibrium would be here. And then all of this area would be the consumer and, and the all of this area in here, okay, to the left of that equilibrium point would be the consumer and the supplier uh, surplus. But that's not the case, right? Because the production level is here, right? This is where the monopoly is producing. Okay, so what happens then is, is 
this area here is considered a loss, right, to society because the monopoly is using its power to produce less than, than society is willing to pay for and really needs, right? So they're able to prop up the price by kind of setting up uh, a, a shortage in the market. That way they can profit, that maximize their profit. So what happens then is, is it becomes inefficient for society in general to have monopolist functioning. And that's something that we call allocative inefficiency. Inefficiency, okay? Allocative inefficiency. So the, the monopolist, in its attempt to maximize its profit, is uh, shorting society by not producing more goods at a lower price, right? So that's kind of the way it works. And uh, just a new concept. So is monopolies, are they good, are they bad? Well, not necessarily either or, right? For society as a whole, they may be bad because they're inefficient and it means higher prices. Government steps in and says, hey, look, we have to control monopoly power and not let them do things that monopoly monopolists do, right? Like uh, keep people out of the market and keep prices higher than they normally would be in a, in a competitive market. So uh, as things kind of balance out from regulation and people uh, and firms striving for monopolist power, uh, things kind of even out there and really that's to protect the consumer from prices that are going to be higher and products really that are going to be there's going to be less products out there for society as a whole. So anyways, hopefully this helps out. We'll talk to you later. Have a good day.